What do you want? Uh, yeah, I owe you rookie rookie videos, don't I? Um. Okay. Uh. So. Dem Demetric Felton. That's that's the guy at the top of my list, right? Demetric Felton. Yep. So, um, my name is Peter Howard at Pierre Howdy on Twitter. I'm a writer and senior writer, apparently, for Dynasty League Football DLF.com. I like stats, or I don't like them so much as they're cold and feeling much like me. So I get along with them pretty well. And uh, don't know much about tape. And I like to play fantasy football. So that's where we're at. Bang out some rookie profiles because the draft is a couple weeks away. And there are a few leftover prospects at running back and tight end that I have to work through. In fact, there's a lot, but... There's only a few left on my short list. Let's put it that way. Um, so the running back that I want to look at next is Demet Demetric, Demetric, Mr. Felton. Um, so let's do that. Yeah, cool. Uh, if you're interested in the data I'm looking at, it's all pinned, listed, whatever it is in the description below a YouTube video, whatever we call that, the link's there. It's free. It's hosted on Patreon, but don't get all scared and stuff. Like you don't have to, there's no... You don't have to pay for that link. <laughs> Just go straight to a Google Sheet and, uh, you know, check out the Sources tab. Thank, thank some of the nerds that, uh, you know, follow them or whatever. They help me make it. Yeah, I think that'll do as an introduction. Let's go look at uh, Mr. Fulton um, and how he compares to past prospects and his future in the NFL, I guess. Yeah, cool. Neat. Let's do that. <laughs> He's still there. Um... Where is he? I know he's kind of high. He was interestingly high. Shall we say that? My pre-draft model. Yeah, he came from UCLA. So, you know, 1.5% conference rate. We don't have a lot of hope when people play for UCS at UCLA in the Pac-12 South. Now, if you dig back far enough in UCLA's history, it was once part of a different conference. And it's where, like, Maurice Jones-Drew came from, if I remember right. Um, and actually a place that the NFL used to spend uh, draft capital on. Um, since though, uh, since around 2012, I think is when it changes in my database. Yeah, since 2012. Um, it's been part of the Pac-12 South instead of just the Pac-10. Yeah, Maurice Drew was drafted in 2006. But um, since then, they have the NFL has not been spending a lot of draft capital on the Pac-12 South. Uh, the most recent was Joshua Kelly, who's actually a fairly productive and interesting running back that ended up um, on the Chargers. Uh, but we all obviously liked Austin Eckler better than that. So, yeah. Um, I thought he was pretty good in college on an interesting depth chart, and it hasn't really borne out. But the few games he has played, we've seen talent, so we know that a pro at least... A player that was productive at UCLA might be talented. It's not adjusted enough by team or whatever to mean that it, it's irrelevant. Like maybe maybe Spencer Brown. Um, but I, 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 I'm getting I'm starting to like that guy though. But um, anyway, so that's Demerick Felton. The other thing you need to know about him. Well, there's a bunch of stuff. I'm barely giving you an insight into the, the start of his profile. If I'm giving you any insight at all, to be fair. Um, but we have low expectation for draft capital, but the NFL does have a vent recently of being more interested in slightly unusual players. And if you judge him by his team conference and then past players have been successful, he was good in the situation he was playing at. He was above average for his team and above average for his conference, based on yards per team attempt at least, um, which is one of the better metrics I found for looking at running backs. Now, if you look at him across the, the, the metrics that are actually in my model, again... He, nothing jumps out. He was like six points above average for running back one in his best season. And everything else is kind of on or slightly above the average line. But this is all out of context. What does this mean to you? Almost nothing. So, um, what should we do here? Let's look at his by year stats. How about that? I, button, yep. Yeah. All right, uh, so I've got UCLA pulled up, and actually in 2018, Joshua Kelly was still on the field. He was the running back one that year, and he had a 2.14 yards per team pass, uh, yards per team attempt adjusted for receiving work, because receiving work is pretty useful, especially in terms of the likelihood of being used as a receiver 
to a greater extent once they go to the NFL. I think that's because NFL teams tend to want you to do what they've seen you do in college, not because of any innate ability to catch passes or not catch passes. Frankly, I think they can all catch a ball. You know what I mean? Um, so in 2018, uh, Felton played nine games. He was the conference running back 11, despite being the team running back two. That's not the most terrible stat. He was getting points considering his place on the depth chart, and running backs typically don't get a lot of opportunity earlier. But he was only scoring 0.71 um, yards per team attempt. Again, that's adjusted for not only his role, but also how efficient he was on that role. That's basically what that stat does. Um, but that's a pretty good introduction, especially with running back. We're more interested in looking at best season. Uh, year two, Joshua Kelly's still there. Similar thing happens, but Felton becomes a lot more efficient on this running back two role, actually out uh, yards, weighted yards per team attempting Joshua Kelly, which is pretty interesting on your second year. Also note that Felton was playing at a slightly elevated age. He's coming into the NFL at an older age, which tends to be a bad signal for running backs, but there are a few aspects to Felton's profile that make him kind of not your average kind of bear at running back as well. So uh, worth noting, but age is a little less useful. More in, We're more interested in what they can do when they have a role. The real problem with Felton, if there is a problem outside of, you know, where he was playing, is that he never really had that role. In his final year, so 2020, he only played six games. Tw two last year was weird, though, so we're kind of overlooking a lot of stuff about last year. He was a running back one that year, however, in terms of points per game, um, and he bested what Joshua Kelly ever did. He got a 2.26 weighted yards per team attempt, which is better than Joshua Kelly's best year of 2.14. So in context, Felton looks pretty good. However, if you know, and if you clicked on this video, you've probably heard a little bit about Felton. You already know I'm kind of burying the lead here where he was primarily really used as a wide receiver as much, if not more, than he was used as a running back throughout his career. So if you can compare, compare his market share of receiving yards and his market share of rushing yards, um, and let's just look at Felton just to keep it simple, um, you'll see that he increased, had an increasing role in the receiving game. He went from 7% receiving, uh, receiving yards to 19% to 10% that last year, but again, that's on a six-game sample, so it, it was still very much playing the receiving game. The 19 and 10 is well above average for a running back playing the running back position. He was very much playing a dynamic role that I guess is listed as running back, but it's not really a running back, and that looks true too when you consider who's running back one for his team that final year through six games and, and only had 39 percent of the team's rushing yards that's fairly low for a dominant running back one even even or at ucla even if you want to just consider the team and not consider other conferences and stuff like that um, and you can see in those two years where he was technically the running back two in points per game, he had barely, like, not even 2% of rushing yards that first year and 18% of rushing yards that second year. That 18% is actually a fairly decent, on average, number for running back two on a college team, depending on which team you're looking at. But considering what we knew he was doing in the receiving game, this was not a running back. Like, pure cut, it was not a player they were who was competing for a running back role. He was at running back, but, but, uh, just leave it hanging there. Hanging butt. Why not? Wait. Uh, yeah, he was very much uh, part of a receiving game, which is a good thing, especially since we're interested in PPR points, and that will likely mean any school, any team he goes to in the NFL will be aware of his skill set in the receiving game and more likely to use him there. Um, I have read some draft coverage, and I'm not honestly sure yet whether he'll be listed as a running back or wide receiver. At the Combine, who's listed as a running back, I'm pretty sure, which is usually pretty much how they deal with it. But, yeah, he's not really a running back, or at least he didn't really play a running back role in college. That brings to mind um, Antonio Gibson most recently. And, you know, there's not enough of them to really say it's becoming more common. But, hanging butt in the air uh, again... Um, I do think with Antonio Gibson and a few other players not so distant past, we can see the NFL is a little more likely to take shots on unusual players, but typically the NFL hates weird. They want a running back when they draft a running back, but Gibson might put the idea, especially since he was from a lower level conference that the NFL rarely spends draft capital on as well, um, the comparison there is Antonio Gibson was coming out younger, uh, he was much bigger and, and more athletic. 
that might be something you want to know as well. So let's let's do a brief comparison of his statistical work as well. Hey, how you doing? So, yeah, I, I put a designation in here so I can compare them. So this is Antonio Gibson and Felton. Again, they're coming from a conference, different conferences, but equally one the NFL kind of ignores in terms of draft capital. Um, Gibson played more of a rusher in college, less of a receiver. In fact, he played, got less opportunity on the whole compared to Demeric Felton, which actually goes in Felton's favor when you think about experience and learning the position and how much tape he put down. But in the small sample that uh, Gibson was on the field, he was a little more impressive in a shorter sample size, so we say. He's got like 15.6 yards per touch, which is just kind of a stupid number, to be honest with you. And I'm largely part of that receiving role he had. But he was very dynamic, and as we'll see when we skin over to combine stats, he is a lot more athletic at a larger size as well. Felton's kind of tiny, especially for running back, which doesn't matter too much because he's not really a running back. But that's kind of the up and down of Felton's profile. It's good, but not for a running back, but also he's not a running back. And so you keep doing this good, bad, and it kind of balances out of let's see which team takes him. I guess if a smart team takes him, that might use him in a dynamic role. You've got a Curtis Samuel level player, I think, who might be dynamic, a good NFL player they'll get a lot of use out of. I think the potential for him to be Gibson is slightly mollified by the fact no NFL team's going to look at Felton coming at an older age at a much smaller size with less athleticism and think Gibson. But he could be a very interesting weapon and there's upside in that kind of player, especially with the potential misnaming of the position he might actually play in the NFL. So he's definitely worth keeping an eye on. I think he's really interesting. Um, I'll point out, well, it's not uh, Gibson's 15.6 yards per touch, 62 is above average for top 12 running backs, but again, he's not a running back, so it's blow for a wide receiver, but he's not really a wide receiver either, and he's not even a utility player like Tyree Kill was listed. He's kind of... I don't know. It's more like a Mike Gusecki, I guess. He's a wide receiver who plays tight end, and Felton's a wide receiver that plays running back? Yeah. It's worth noting that some of the best receiving backs in the NFL also don't look like this. They weren't used as wide receivers. Like, James White was just a full traditional three-down running back in college, for example. Giovanni Bernard had an exceptionally high usage in the receiving game, but not like this. And he also had a lot more use in the rushing game. and was also a lot better at both if you're a running back, but Felton wasn't a running back. So I don't really know how you compare those two. Alvin Kamara used a lot less in the rushing game, but also more consistently and was more effective in the receiving game. Again, you can dig through those player examples or any that you come up with to see what I'm saying but that's kind of what I find when I break down so like he's breaking the Zach Reed rule of having three years or at least one season with 20 receptions or more but that's good for a running back and not for a wide receiver so hmm you know um still when you compare his production in college, Felton actually looks more productive. Again, he was on the field more for a longer period of time and in a, in a, in a more decent sample size, but also at a, I don't know why I keep doing this arm thing, at an older age, which is a negative for wide receiver or running back, typically. Mostly, if he's a running back, you just get to use the best season, but he also plays more at wide receiver. And yeah, all my sentences just kind of trail off at the end, when I'm talking or looking at Felton, it's all like, good, but maybe also good, nowhere to go with it. Like, nowhere to go with it. There's not a lot of comparisons we can make, unfortunately. Um, I would I would say this. He was very good at the role he had in college. That is not a role that really exists in the NFL, but we're seeing a growing use of players in misdefined or unclear roles that are sort of a hybrid player between the two. Having said that, most don't... Whoa. What happened there? Most don't develop a huge fantasy upside like Antonio Gibson did last year. And even with Antonio Gibson, there were usage concerns where he was a running back, but also not a running back. And that guy is definitely built more like a running back than Felton is. So let me scan over to the recently added combine sets to show you what I'm kind of talking about there. 
Again, combine starts, I don't think they're predictive or decision makers, but it tells you, it's very descriptive of how the player was playing, how they might have to play in the NFL. And it's worth noting that Gibson's got a 30 BMI, so he's thick. And the Felton is 27 at the BMI level, which, again, doesn't make them more, for me, more or less likely to succeed, but it does tell you something a little bit how they're constituted. Um, uh, Felton only weighed 189 pounds at the Pro Day this year. Gibson was 228, um, Felton's 69 inches, nice, but that's actually below six foot tall, whereas Gibson was one foot, and I think that's one foot and one inch tall when you convert 73 inches to feet, and um, also Felton's not uh, even as strong, 10 on the bench versus 16 on the bench, he's a little slower, 1.59 compared to 4.39, he's slow, okay, Gibson didn't do a three cone or a shuttle, but yeah, he didn't jump as high <laughs> as Antonio Gibson, and pretty much across the board. So Antonio Gibson gets the better sum summary scores, he has better weight adjusted and height adjusted speed score. Felton is smaller, but was more productive at the weird ass role he got in col college than Gibson was. But someone's already taken a shot at Gibson in the fourth round, and he was very good in the NFL. So. And uh, Demeric Felton doesn't really look like Antonio Gibson. But the G Antonio Gibsons of the world might give us hope that there is a good team out there who might find a role that fits Felton better. Kind of maybe no, no. Trail off. There you go. That That's where I'm at on Felton. I think he's really interesting as a prospect. I think... We definitely need to see where he, where he's going to be drafted and which team he's going to land on. And, like, I'm not trusting the Jets to figure out what they could possibly do with Felton. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at. I, I think it's really interesting. Um, but definitely outside the top first two of rookie drafts right now. Um, it would take a lot in the draft to make me consider him any higher than that. And it's very important to remember that while Gibson Give, provide some insight to the NFL maybe using interesting, interestingly used players in college in different ways, he is not Antonio Gibson. They do, the two don't really look alike in college uh, at all, despite coming from similarly low-drafted conferences and having slightly weird roles. Like, we got to see a lot more of Felton at an older age um, at, at UCLA than we ever got to see of Antonio Gibson at Memphis. So, yeah. They're very different players, and they played diff very differently in college. Um, and Felton probably isn't as athletic as most who are interested in that diverse skill set might be, I think. Um, I said it's Curtis Samuel, but he's incredibly athletic and dynamic between the decision of whether he was a running back or wide receiver. And he was used a lot more running back than Felton ever was. I mean... Cole Beasley upside? Is that the best? Trail off at the end. That, that's where I'm at in Felton. Um, that's what his stats look like to me. He doesn't have a direct comparison. He was pretty good as a wide receiver running back. He's not good as a wide receiver, and he definitely wasn't a running back. And, yep. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. He also did better with his role, which was markedly different than Joshua Kelly did in his best season in a weighted yards per team pass attempt or weighted yards per team attempt basis, but that's very much a running back stat. So if he's a wide receiver, it's a little unfair to compare him. And trail off at the end. So that's Demer Demeric Felton. I think he's definitely worth a look. I definitely want to know where he goes in the NFL. Um, yeah. How's your day? On to the next one, I guess. Uh, thanks for checking out. If you did, let me know what you think of Mr. Felton in the comments. If I'm uh, I'm missing a lot because I haven't really dug into anything or got a lot of other opinions on Felton yet. But um, yeah, his stats are just kind of his own thing. That's that's where I. Thanks again. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>